Hey everyone, I've got a question from a, a certain someone that I'm going to answer in this video. Can you do a tutorial on using multiple instruments in one instance of contact on track instruments with 16 MIDI channels and 16 individual audio outputs for each instrument in that instance of contact? Yes, let's do that. So you could do this uh, by adding this as a rack instrument. That would be one way to do it. It's not too, too big of a difference. Uh, I am going to suggest doing it like this instead. So we're going to add a instrument track. <clears throat> I'm going to say contact. And that's fine. Only one count. Let's make 16 different things. Okay, so I've made uh, 16 different instruments in the contact instance and uh, they are mapped to the different MIDI channels. Okay, so far so good. So this is for, for uh, being able to test this and see that it actually works. <clears throat> and uh, here you can see all MIDI inputs uh, and the MIDI out is going to go to the contact. However, if I mouse over this, I can activate the outputs. And right now, only the uh, the first stereo output is activated. So I, I kind of need to count here right now uh, and say 15. So that's 4, 8, 12, <coughs> and then 13, uh, 14, 15, 16. And then I can activate all of them at once. And that is, if we have a look in the mixer window, that has now uh, activated all of these different tracks with the same names. Uh, and if I remember correctly, once you rename these and restart in Cubase, uh, the, the outputs will, will um, have the correct naming. Uh, right now it doesn't, so that is a thing I, I would recommend. Uh, I'm going to do that and then we'll speed this up. Okay, so we're back and I've renamed the outputs. And so far, <clears throat> if we have a look. So first of all, I haven't made the, the 16 MIDI tracks. And uh, second of all, if I actually play these, uh, everything would come out from, from uh, uh, the same output. So let me just show you that. So I have um, a uh, what's the key command again? That that choose track preset, and I have saved a uh, preset with sixteen MIDI tracks already routed the correct way, which is um, very practical when you're building these things. So you, you can go ahead and do that yourself if you want. I I also have a blank. Uh, MIDI track at the top, which I use for just a spacer. So I color it black and deactivate it. And, and that could be uh, very helpful when build, building large templates. So all of these we need to connect to uh, this thing right here. Uh, one thing that is not amazing about this is that the first stereo output, if we have a look here, the first stereo output, and now they've some of them have been uh, renamed here. Um, is going to be the name of the instrument track. So if you wanted to, you could add a, another one on top <clears throat> and say that that was supposed to be um, the alien bell in in this in this instance. Then we could call this um, Spitfire Labs Multi, for example. But if I go in here now, this is this is a changed. So I'm just going to keep it uh, uh, as I have right now, but that is also an option to just uh, disregard uh, output one and two uh, in the contact instance. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to re reassign all these right now and I'm selecting all of them uh, and then doing a alt shift or option shift and saying, clicking the right input and all of these are now assigned which means that I can play, if you have a look at the right hand side, I can play the different things. As long as we find where it's actually playing and so you get the point right. But however, they're all coming out. Uh, we're in the mixer now, but I don't want to see the MIDI channels. I only want to see the actual outputs. 
So every every uh, single one is going to come out of the same output because we haven't uh, told contact uh, where to send the outputs. And to do that, we need to open up the outputs section. And <clears throat> you could go ahead and delete the auxes. There's four auxes here. And you could create 16 stereo tracks. Or you could have a look at the presets slash batch configuration thing where you can do batch functions like clear output section and create one individual channel for each loaded instrument, which is exactly what we want. Uh, the other ones are very helpful as well, but we're not going to talk about them right now. Um, so there we go. And to be honest, we can probably use the second batch function. I'm, I'm contradicting myself already. Rename output section according to assigned instruments. <clears throat> uh, is that going to work? Uh, did I do something wrong here? So everything now is assigned to that. Uh, okay, so it, it did have the correct thing. I'm just going to say because the names are really long for all of these patches, I'm just going to check it. It's faster. So number 10. Okay, it's now sending All right, so I'm back and I know why. I I remember uh doing this uh but I've since uh installed a new uh, bought a new computer, so I haven't done it on this PC yet and I don't use this method myself anymore. So that's why it's not working, but that's a good opportunity for us to have a look at it. So we've done a lot right now. We've, uh, we have the MIDI channels playing, we have uh, the audio going to different uh, places. However, this isn't really doing it for us. It, it is tells Cubase that some of these tracks are stereo tracks and some of these tracks are mono tracks. And it does that based on a standard configuration, which you can kind of see here. So you have four stereo outputs and then you have a bunch of mono outputs, which doesn't really make a lot of sense, um, but that's just the way it is. So here in preset, preset slash batch configuration, we can save the current output, sec output section state as default for the VST plugin, for example, or all formats. <clears throat> and if I do that, uh, I need to reopen this project. It says in the manual, it says you need to reinstantiate. So uh, delete the track and start over again, but this should do, this should do fine. So Let's have a go and have, have a look, have a look. Yes, we can now see that uh, the, the naming have changed and we have stereo tracks here. So if, when you're doing this yourself, uh, do this as a step before renaming, renaming them as something else because we can rename these after we've um, made the tracks available in Cubase. Uh, this is the naming that will appear on every contact instance. Uh, so if I create a new one now, right now, add track instrument contact and have a look at the outputs, uh, I can now see that this is the standard. And so let me see so if we did batch function uh, and rename to the assigned, or uh, I could go through these now and say output one and and go through and do that and that would make more sense uh, than what what we have right here but that is the way you do it and if we just go through it to make sure right now uh, we can uh, first of all we need to activate these again so activate the outputs that's the wrong button there we go okay and up until this guy, I believe, looks good. And we can do this. So <clears throat> now, come on, just proving a point. And the last ones. Uh, 
Good. So whether or not this actually saves that many resources, I am not sure. Um, I've seen tests saying that they do and seen other tests saying that they don't. Uh, in my workflow, I haven't, um, there's not too much difference for me, but it might um, come into play uh, if, you, if you're if you running a lower RAM, um, then it might have an effect after all, even though it shouldn't really, but uh, <clears throat> might very well be that uh, this, this will be a better solution. I, I think the best solution for someone with like 16 gigs of RAM or something like that is to uh, have a template with all tracks disabled. Because if you have your tracks on uh, SSDs anyways, it's not gonna take long to load it in. Um, the bad thing about that is um, after a while when your project is almost finished, if you close it and open it up again, it's gonna take long again. So, um, but it's, it's a trade off. Um, yeah, this is how you do 16 MIDI tracks uh, and fill up a contact with 16 MIDI tracks. We also have the 16 individual outputs, which means that you would have individual control <clears throat> over each track and could route them independently, uh, do volume independently. And so you wouldn't really need to do anything inside of contact. Of course, you could, you could do this uh, on a, on a per, hello, on a per track basis here. So you could do some volume adjustments here, but this is assigned to uh, CC7. So um, it's, it's a little finicky because suddenly there's a, a CC message that bumps, uh, bumps this out up or down. And uh, it's, it's, it's a lot. I feel safer using a normal audio fader, you know? Um, so you could do that. Or for example, if you use the MIDI fader, in Cubase that is actually mapped to CC7. So you could do it from, from right here. And that I think that's pretty cool. Uh, as long as it's um, off, it won't send anything. But if you want to, you can use them for a CC7, which is a cool feature, I guess. Okay, so I hope that answered uh, the question about how to, to do this sort of a thing. Um, and let me know if there's any more questions. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll be back soon. Bye.